All right, our third or second way of solving a quadratic equation from its standard form is to convert that standard form to the vertex form by completing the square and then isolating for x like you did in the first one when you had vertex form. So in reality, this isn't done very often because we're going to learn a shortcut to it. However, I want you to understand how it works so that when we learn the shortcut, you know why it's working the way it's working. And that will be tomorrow's lesson. So tomorrow's lesson will be a third way to solve quadratic equations, which are in standard form. Um, but today we're learning this, but in practice we don't actually use it uh, very often. All right, so we're going to complete the square to write the first one in vertex form. Now my a value is just a 1 here, so I don't have to worry about factoring the a out of the x squared and the x term. So I'm going to go directly into the second step, which is taking half of the b term. So half of 12 would be 6. And then I'm going to square that. We add that value. So 6 squared is 36. We add 36 and we subtract 36. So the net result is 0. And then we still have the plus 3 that was in the original equation. And the reason we do that is to cook this up to be a perfect square that we can factor. And then we combine these two constant terms. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We have an x minus 6 all to the exponent of 2. I took the square root of the first, square root of the last, sine from the middle, all to the exponent of 2, and then minus 36 plus 3 should be a minus 33 equaling 0. And now we can isolate for our x. x appears only once. I'm going to add 33 to both sides. So we get x minus 6 all squared is equal to 33 after I add 33 to both sides. And then to undo the exponent 2, I'm going to square root both sides. And when I square root, there's always two answers, the positive answer and the negative answer, which students sometimes forget about. So x minus 6 could equal positive square root 33, or x minus 6 equals negative square root 33. And then to get x by itself, I would add 6 to both sides. So we get x equals square root 33 plus 6. And then on our calculators, if we actually type that in, we can get an approximate, approximate answer of 11.74. On the other one, when we add 6 to both sides, we get x equals negative square root 33 and then plus 6. And if we put that into our calculators, the approximate answer would be about 0.26, I believe. All right, next example, I do have an a value that's not just a 1, so my first step is to common factor that a out of the x squared and the x term. So I believe we should have an x squared minus 8x. We still have that plus 10 on the end. Next, step 2 is to take half of the b term, which is negative 8. Half of negative 8 would be 4. If I square 4, I get 16. I'm going to take that 16 and add and subtract it to both uh, for a net result of 0. So the two lines are still equal. I group those first three terms in the brackets together. They make the perfect square, so I have to move this minus 16 out of the bracket by multiplying 2 through the bracket with it. So the x squared minus 8x plus 16 stays within the bracket. I'm going to move that minus 16 out by multiplying it by 2. That becomes minus 32 plus 10 equals 0. Now I can factor that perfect square, square root the first, square root the last, take the sign from the middle and make it squared. Minus 32 plus 10 is minus 22 equals 0. I'm going to add 22 to both sides. x minus 4 all squared equals 22. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to undo the times by 2. I get x minus 4 all squared equals 11. Now I'm going to square root both sides, and when I square root, there's always two answers, the positive and the negative, square root of 11. So x minus 4 could equal the positive square root of 11, or x minus 4 equals the negative square root of 11. Then I would add 4 to both sides, I get x being equal to the square root of 11 plus 4 as an exact answer which is approximately equal to, I think it was 7.32 when I calculated it before, 7.32.
add 4 to both sides here, we would get x equals negative root 11, add 4. So x is approximately equal to 0 0.68. Okay, so if you want to try the next two on your own, you can. And uh, so put this on pause, turn your phone upside down, your iPad upside down or whatever, put it on pause and try the next two. Um, if you're not sure what you're doing, then go ahead and listen to the next part. Otherwise, after you've done it, you can check with the next part. Okay, if you've tried part C, you would have common factored negative 3 out of the x squared and this uh, 18x term. And then, to complete the square, you would have taken half of that negative 6 and gotten 3. 3 squared is 9, so we added 9 and subtracted 9. And then on the next line, we multiplied that minus 9 with the minus 3 to get the minus 27. And then the next line, I factored my perfect square and combined like terms. And then I start isolating. So I subtracted 24 from both sides and then divided both sides by 3, took the square root of both sides here, and then I broke it into my two pieces. Either x minus 3 is positive, eight, uh, positive square root of 8 or x minus 3 is the negative square root 8 added 3 to both sides and I get my two answers approximately 5.83 and approximately 0 0.17. Now those wouldn't have factored if I tried doing the factoring it it just wouldn't work to be nice integer numbers it's not factorable over the integers. Uh, part D I'm going to common factor my a value of 0 0.5 out of the x squared and the x term and when I do I get a minus 16 x here half of 16 is four, uh, 8 and then 8 squared is 64 so I add 64 and subtract 64 on the next line I multiply 0 0.5 by that negative 64 and get the negative 32 I factored the perfect square and combined my like terms and then I start to isolate I add 18 to both sides divide both sides by 0.5 and then to get um, undo the square, I square root both sides. This time I have the square root of 36, which is a nice answer of 6, and, or negative 6. And then solving, I get x equals 14 or x equals 2. So I've only given you three to try here. Um, as I said, it's not the be all and the end all because we're going to learn a shortcut for doing this. Um, but the shortcut cut is based on this method. So um, only three questions here. You can check any of your answers by putting y equals and then put your function in instead of the equals zero into Desmos. And if you look at where the x-intercepts are, they should match what you get x being equal to.